Hello, hello everybody out there. This is We Woes Youth Segment. I'm your host, Sheree, where we focus on encouraging our youth. And I want to welcome you guys to another show. I hope you guys had an awesome week. As we go into yet another weekend, never forget to take God with wherever you go. So we have a good show. We're going to be interviewing a formal NBA player. That goes by the name of Luke the Wright. And he's going to talk about his trials and tribulations as far as being a former basketball player. And some of the things that he went to and how he heard the call from God and he answered. Once again, I hope everybody had an awesome week. Um, I would love to hear about your week. So if you want to um, email us, it is segment at gmail.com. That is wewoe youth segment at gmail.com or you can also call into the station the number is 910-276-1460 so we have our caller who just called in welcome yeah. luther how you doing out here luther right calling all the way from jersey city new jersey Wow. Thank you for calling into the, sh the station and encouraging our youth. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. God you. Is good. Yes, he is all the hey. time. Hey. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to uh, my church family. I'm not sure if they're listening, but my church and my pastor, I go to Morningstar Community Christian Center. That's in Linden, New Jersey. And my pastor is Dr. Thurman Evans, and his wife is um, First Lady um, Benetta Evans. Okay. Um, I just thank you again for allowing me to come on your show today. God bless you and thank you so oh, much. Oh, no problem, Luther. Thank you and God bless. And I know um, you're going to bless our listeners out there. <laughs> and I know someone will be blessed oh, by your testimony. Oh, yes. Yes. So tell us, Luther. Okay. Who is Luther Wright? <laughs> who, who is Luther Wright? Luther Wright is a former... First round draft pick of the 1993 draft by the Utah Jazz and the NBA. Um, Luther Wright is a musician. Luther Wright is a producer. Luther Wright is an actor. Luther Wright is a published author with a book titled A Perfect Fit, available anywhere major books are sold. I mean, major bookstores, anywhere books are sold, Barnes and Nobles, Borders, Amazon.com. My website is www.lw50. Yeah. And um, it's a great book. It's, it's definitely uh, 
Okay, well, before we get into your book, tell us, what led up to you becoming a basketball player that, if I'm not mistaken, you were signed for a multi-million dollar deal, correct? Yeah, my first deal, um, I signed, only signed one, I signed for $5 million for four years of playing. Um, only played a year and a half. I got, uh, wow. I was diagnosed, misdiagnosed with um, bipolar disorder. They said I had attention deficit disorder. They put me on all this medication. And I was still, you know, using and abusing drugs. My drug, drug of choice was marijuana, cocaine, and alcohol. Wow. So it's a combination of street drugs and, uh, prescription drugs that mixed and just right. sent me, you know, it, it took me out of my mind, took me out of my comfort zone and I had a nervous breakdown. So. Wow. So what led you into actually, you know, you got all this fame, money, but I know people were flaunting to you. What made you decide to go into using drugs? Oh, uh, just, just being curious. You know, I, nothing forced me. No one, you know, a lot of people always ask me, well, who, who introduced you to it? You know, it was, it was all out of curiosity. It was around, and I thought, you know, at the time, I thought I was having fun. I thought it was the cool thing to do. You want to be in with the crowd and uh, don't want to be, you know, looked at as not down and not cool and you're scared or whatever. And I just got influenced by my curiosity. Was drugs around you at that time? Oh, and drugs were always around. I just, you know, when opportunity, when I went to college, that's where the, when it really took off. I went to college because uh, my parents weren't around to supervise me. Right. You know, I, I, I felt like I was a grown man, 17, 18 year old high school guy going to college. I felt like it was nothing I couldn't do because I'm away from home and I'm going to I'm do what I want to do. And so I, I chose to get off into drugs and alcohol and, um, that's one of the worst, you know, one of the worst mistakes I ever, I think I ever made in my life. Wow. Before we go more into that, tell us what led to you becoming a basketball player as far as you didn't really always want to be a basketball player, correct? Yeah, well, it wasn't really forced. I just, you know, I was, I was always the tallest guy, you know, around and, you know. How tall the, are you? Yeah, I'm seven foot two. So seven foot two. Wow. <laughs> it, basketball was kind of like a way to become popular and become, you know, sought after uh, for college and stuff like that. It was a way for me to pay for college because yeah. my parents couldn't afford to send me to school. Yeah. So basketball, and, you know, not not you know going into it, didn't really realize that until later on in life that this could be my ticket, my meal ticket. Right. And, you know, of course, get out the hood, but play on a professional level someday if I just worked hard at it. Wow, wow. So how was your support system? Well, you know, I got support from my family, but um, I'm the oldest child, so my, my nieces and nephews didn't, I mean, my, my brothers and sisters didn't really understand, you know, what my position was as being a professional athlete. And, you know, I can't really blame my family. They, you know, they love me unconditional, but, you know, I didn't have, like, like today when I look at athletes and stuff like that, they have um, they have um, trainers and they have um, chefs and cooks and stuff like that mm -hmm. to um, make sure that their needs and stuff are met, you know, daily. And um, I, I didn't have that uh, when mm -hmm. I was playing. So mm -hmm. it was kind of unfortunate that um, I had to deal with a lot of this stuff on my own. That's where I knew how. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I chose drugs to kind of get through the pain or, you know, try to, you know, get past a lot of issues that I had grown up that I never dealt with. Right. From a, from a child all the way up to my adult life. I never felt, you know, I never trusted people enough to just tell them what it is that I was dealing with mm -hmm. on a personal level. I, and I just used basketball to kind of Wow, wow, wow. So who are some of the people um, from reading your um, your bio on your website? You played with a, actually a couple of legends. Who are they? Yeah, definitely. Um, Carl Malone, Josh Bakken, Tristan Amos, Hugh, and 
you know, being a, a retired NBA basketball player, I'm friends with a lot of the legends that, you know, uh, played and, and were very were great players. You know, like I know uh, Oscar Robinson personally. I know Bill Russell personally. I know Kareem Abdul-Jabbar personally. Um, I just did a TV interview last night with John Sally that, that played for the Detroit Pistons. Mm-hmm. They're all my friends because we all... Okay, well, before we go into actually um, what you went through being on drugs and how you got off it and how you found Christ, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be be back with Luther. Welcome back to We Will Youth Segment. I'm your host, Sheree, Sheree, excuse me, where we focus on encouraging our youth. And here we have Luther Wright. He was a formal basketball player that played with the Utah Jazz. Welcome, Luther, again. I'm back, and I'm back. And full effect. (laughs) All right, so we were talking about some things that led up to you actually indulging in some drugs. So tell us, how did you... How was you able to get off of the drugs? Well, my life was at a point where, in my heart, I knew that my addiction was going to lead me either, you know, one of three places. It was either going to kill me, it was going to land me in jail, or I was going to go crazy. Mm-hmm. I went crazy one time. I, you know, I think I never really been to jail. And, of course, no one wants to die, you know. Right. So, March 15th, today I have 8 years, 11 months, 9 days, 7 hours, and 2 minutes clean, so I thank God for just giving me the strength to just endure, because temptation is always around, and I tell people every chance I take, you know, it's hard to avoid people placing the things, because we are people placing the things, you just have to decide, and get to a point where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. thing the youth struggle with. Right? Because that's what they're chasing. 
Right. But being that, what encouragement would you give? Being that the fact is there are a lot of peer pressure and influences, but at the end of the day, there's still their choice to make. You're saying no, but nobody's saying no. You're saying right. no because you want to live. You're right. saying no because you, you, you don't, you, you don't want to die. You don't right. want to have to go through the Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because it's not it's worth it. You know, if you want to break it down in a spiritual aspect, we wasn't born with, with, with blood in our mouths and, 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 and cups of liquor in our hands. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so it's not natural right. for, us, for us to be indulging in these things that they're not of Christ. Amen. So what would Jesus do? Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's not. It's not. So like Luther says, you know, and in the word of God said, you know, we have our, he give us free will, but it's our yeah. choices and it's good that we have to make our, the correct choices for our lives, yeah. you know, amen. So talk, let's take us into, um, actually you had to go into surgery for something that happened. Talk to me about oh, that. Man. see, somebody been, somebody been beating them. Somebody, <laughs> been, somebody been checking up on me. I had oh. to, I had to, Lulu. <laughs> adults you know we get into certain things and it's like there'll be signs and god be trying to warn us you know don't do this don't do that don't go here don't go there you know and and see these are interviews these testimonies are here to encourage young people you know so you don't have to go down the same route that some of us go down you know we yeah, try to another, another thing right. to add to that to all the youth that's listening you know um if you don't believe me and and and, and if you want to just do what you want to do and, and live the life that you want to live and you make it back, you know, I will be here to say, not to say I told you so, but to encourage you to 
try this way this time. You know, because that's what my family was after the storm, you know, passed, passed over. You know, my family was there to encourage me and, and just love me and was happy to see me trying something different. And they're still happy to see me like this. Mm-hmm. You know, they yeah. didn't love, they didn't like, not that they didn't love me, but they just didn't like the person that my addiction had turned me into, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't understand. Places that God would take you. Amen. Amen. So speaking, you have any sisters and brothers? trying to find shoes, you know, this seven foot (laughs) two. where you was like, Lord, I can't do it anymore, and I need you. I need your help. No, you know, that hospital bed, and, um, not, you know, not, not really knowing, you know, believe I didn't really understand what I was about to take place, about, you know, them getting ready to cut my toes off. And, so that's when you and, actually um, gave your life to God. Because I know um, I was reading about uh, you were speaking with the pastor, um, what's his name, that had asked you to try a guy, that you tried everything else, but how about oh, you trying a guy? Yeah, I used to that at my church, you know, um, and we were having a conversation, and, and I was just talking to him about my life and all the stuff that I tried, you know, I tried women, mm-hmm. tried Which is also in New Jersey. Yes. Wow, awesome. Okay, well, we're going to talk about um, your book. Oh, gosh, your book that you guys have to go purchase and, and let it encourage you and encourage someone else who may be going through some of the same thing that Luther has been gone through. Also, uh, maybe we can hear a little sample because you're a singer as well. 
I'm 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 <laughs> oh wow well we're going to take another commercial um commercial break we're going to go into this other song by an artist out of uh charlotte north carolina that goes by the name of lisa mccleden uh-huh. and we're going to be right back with luther amen right, I'm here. amen Welcome back to We Will Youth segment. I am your host, Sheree, where we focus on encouraging our youth and more. And here we have a formal basketball player that goes by the name of Luther Wright. And he has been giving us his great testimony of being um, a basketball player, going into using drugs, and coming out on top for the Lord. Amen, amen. And his up, well, his book that he published. Um, so, welcome, Luther. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy this interview. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you once again. You know, you've been through so much, and I I can just say, well, but God, you know, it's amazing what God can do and how he can bring us out. Amen? Yep. So let's go into this ministry of music as well as your self-published book, and you can give us the name of it. The name of the book is A Perfect Fit. Once again, where can they find you at? As well as posting the book. I live in New Jersey. I'm in Jersey City, New Jersey. But for um for booking purposes or what have you, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I have a, I'm, I'm under a, a, a my manager. Her name is Sarah Westlake. She's um out of New York, New York. And uh, her phone number. I don't either. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm available. I'm a motivational speaker. I am a uh, musician as well. I have, a little, have a few bands that I play with. I do mostly um, quartet and contemporary gospel music at, at church and at different venues here in New Jersey. Um, I sing a little bit, but I I, I play more. So next time I make a trip to New York, I got to stop off and yeah, taste on, some of the food. Uh, <laughs> big, big fish we have here. Oh. But, um, like I said, my, my manager, her name is Sarah Westlake at the Westlake Agency, New York, New York. Her email address is Sarah at the Westlake Agency. That's S-A-R-A-H at T-H-E-W-E-S-T-L-A-K-E-A-G-E-N-C-Y. Dot com and her number is 914-218-7402. Okay, so once again, if you want to bring Luther Wright to any events, uh, churches, um, to come out to the schools and speak to the youth or any community events, definitely hit him up and bring him down so he can encourage some of our young men and women who may be going through some of the, some of the trials and tribulations that Luther went through. So, Luther. Yeah. Luther, Luther, Luther. (laughs) Tell us, 
Okay, I know you can't say everything that's in a book. All right, how many pages is it, by the way? Uh, I want to say 189. Okay. Is there anything else that you would like to share or give us a piece of that's in the book that we didn't go over in the, in the interview? Uh, yeah, the fact that as a youth I was uh, molested by three individuals, two male, two female, two um, wow. and uh, I carried that burden with me for, until I wrote the book. And I really didn't tell too many people about that. Wow. Um, Wow. At what um, age did that was, happen? The book definitely was a way for me to talk about it. Right. Put it out and hope that it can help somebody else. Wow. That had similar situation or experience. And wow. Didn't know who to turn to or what to, who to tell or whatever like that. Right, right. That definitely took courage, you know? Yeah, it definitely, um, it definitely something that helped me to just heal. You know, get over the hurt on with my life. Um, it's kind of like carrying a, a, a bag around your shoulder and just getting a chance to just let it go. Just release it. Wow. And just keep moving. Keep moving forward. Wow. Don't even look back. Just keep moving forward. Wow. Wow. And at what age you said this happened? Wow. Between age 5 and all the way up to like 11, 12. Wow. Wow. And you yeah. never told a soul? Uh, what, what, and you said you never told a soul. What made you uh, not want to be able to, I guess, communicate and let your parents know what was going on? Well, at the time, my parents were going through a nasty divorce. They separated. And, wow. Um, I just didn't want to be Say we have any parents out, out there, I want to encourage you guys, you know, and, and or you know someone, encourage them to definitely be a part of your children's life. And it's not just buying them clothes and feeding them when they're hungry and prepare, you know, having to, to have a roof over their head. You have to get involved, you know, and let your children know that you are there for them and that you love them. You know, and what kind of advice would you give to children, you know, because this is happening a lot. You know, where children, teens, they're being molested by not only just strangers, but familiar faces, family members. So what would you say to encourage them to, to speak out and not not be silent? No matter, you know, they're telling them, you know, they say, well, they're going to threaten to kill my family. You know, you have a five-year-old and someone tell them that five-year-old is not going to want to say anything. So what would you say to them to encourage them to speak? Well, I mean, just find a person that you trust like a counselor or a parent or uh, an adult. You know, someone that you can confide in and you know they won't tell anybody else, like, uh, uh, and just get comfortable enough to talk about it and um, don't be afraid to talk about it. You know, I think that's, I think that's what happens a lot. We, we get afraid to even talk about the stuff for fear of being labeled or fear of uh, getting in trouble or getting the person that did it in trouble, it's a violation. So you have to put it out there. You have to tell someone about it and, 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 and uh, you know, just be truthful and, and, and get it out. Somehow, somehow, even, even if you got to write it, you know, write a letter or something. I don't, you know, I, I really don't have the answer because it took me, for, it took me it seemed like forever wow. to even get comfortable with talking about it. Right. I mean, that's probably one of the main reasons why, right. you know, children go for years without even telling anyone because of fear, because of <coughs> having trust issues. Right. I could imagine. Um, not knowing who to tell, um, not being comfortable enough to let it go. You know, not let it go. I mean, forgive and forget. Right. You know, all the stuff that we hear people saying, and, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it, it just depends on the individual. Like, you have to be, you know, strong enough to, when you share it or talk about it, you get you get a, a sense of relief from it and, and know that that's what it's all about, relieving yourself from the burdens that, you know, have us bound up and, and, and keep us in secrecy or keep us in hiding or keep us um, from not wanting to talk about it because of, of fear. You right. know, fear is, is false evidence. 
evidence of him real. So, right. um, and even if you do tell your parents or you know um, oh, someone and they don't believe you, you, go tell someone else. Exactly. You know, go I tell someone else. Don't don't, don't stop. You know, if they don't believe you, don't don't think that nobody will believe you. Tell someone else, because it's not right. It's not right. Wow, wow. Mm mm mm. Once again, thank you for for sharing that with us. You know, because it took it takes real courage. Because a lot of people are scared to talk about it. You know, of of fear of what people might think, what people might say. You know, but it's like you know, hey, they talked about Jesus. <laughs> so you know, we gotta keep keep doing what we need to do and walking in accordance to to to, to God's plan. You know, over our life, no matter what. And then God knows our heart. So as long as we're doing what we know we should be doing. It doesn't matter what anybody else say. So talk about this movie that you got coming out. Because you said, you mentioned that you were an actor as well. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm in a movie. It's got a little short part in the movie. It's called um, Living With No Regrets. It's, it should be out in April or May. I'm not sure the release date. Um, but I'm working on a TV show actually right now. It's called The Healing Agent. It's with a friend of mine. His name is Greg Morata. I've been working with this guy for about four months now, and okay. um, he's very supportive of the Move the Right movement, and um, he sees me as a, a, a color commentator for a college uh, conference in the future, you know, just doing play-by-play -play for basketball teams and stuff, college or whatever, but the the, uh, the documentary and the, uh, the, the TV show is, is, is basically to try to help me uh, get to where I'm supposed to be as far as a career goes. You know, I, I got some weight issues. I got some weight I need to get off. Okay. Um, and I just, you know, I have the, they say I have the charisma and I have the voice that I should be back on the radio and, and doing my thing, acting and stuff like that. So he's trying to, you know, open up some doors for me. So I just wanted to give him a shout out. Awesome. And um, just be on the lookout for the movie. I'm not sure if it's going to be a, a, a big budget movie, but I know this is my first movie. And I do have some scripts that I'm reading. Um, for future movies, so um, wow, awesome! If a perfect fit, if a perfect fit don't get turned into a movie sooner or later, you'll see me in a bunch of movies. Amen. Until it, so that the perfect, a perfect deal comes up on the table. Amen. Well, Luther, I'm gonna tell you now. We don't talk, so <laughs> you know I'm an actress, so I don't want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> I know you need that part. <laughs> you, I want that gig. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, so let's talk about your beautiful wife that God blessed you with. Oh, I almost forgot about my baby. Can't forget about your other half. Yeah, I was going to remind you. <laughs> I appreciate you for reminding me. Let me give a shout out to my beautiful queen pop, the love of my life, Angela Felton Wright. Amen. My beautiful wife of married five years. Amen. Six years. Uh, August 18th will be our six year wedding anniversary. And I love her with all my heart because she loves me. Amen. We, uh, what, what the attraction was when I first met her, she didn't know who I was. So <laughs> I used to use that as part of my pickup line. Hey, baby, you don't know who I am? <laughs> Is she from Jersey, too? She's like, no. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, look like the basketball man. She's like, no. Oh, wow. So she's from Jersey as well, correct? Yeah, she's from Jersey as well, but she's, um, she was in the military, so she, she lived abroad. She? She's five, three. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh, she's my height. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> wow, that is awesome. I love you, Luther. I love you so much. And I encourage you to keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing, keep moving, keep walking, keep Oh, and doing what you do, you know, for God, because only what we do for God will last. And once again, before we let you go, let me know we got you got some things that you got to do, including eating some fish. Look, what type of fish is it? <laughs> I like tilapia. Yeah, fish. Yeah, fish. Catfish. Okay. Tell everybody where they can reach you at and where they can purchase the book. You can purchase my book online at 
online, you go to my website at www.lw50.com. You can go, um, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter. Um, my email address is lwhite1971 at hotmail.com. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. Um, I gave out the information for my booking agency, which is the Westlake Agency. My booking manager, her name is Sarah Westlake, and her number is 914-218-7402. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Luther, and I ha I hope you have a great evening. Once again, I am recording this for you guys um, that would like to see, um, that missed maybe the first half or whatnot. I will post it on the fan page and on YouTube. It is We Woe Youth Segment. So, Luther, I'll be able to um, tag you in it as well and post it on your page. Okay. All right. I appreciate you. I didn't get a chance to sing this time. I got to work on my song. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I appreciate you. Well, that, I want to be, let the people know they can go. If they want to hear me sing a Christmas song with my church choir, I'm on YouTube. You can type in Do the Right um, First Round Draft Pick for Christ and check out my little uh, moment in, 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 in the spotlight on stage doing my thing singing. Amen. Uh, a gift for the king is the song. The name of the Amen. Song, a gift for the king. You also work with some of the youth. I think I was reading that as well. Were you volunteer? Oh, yeah, I, was, I used to teach Sunday school. I used to. Uh, I'm still involved with the youth at my church. I'm involved with the youth um, empowerment program here in Jersey City called Team Walker. Um, okay. And I, you know, I do motivational speaking, so I'm always uh, encouraging youth. And sometimes when I go to my wife's school, I have to help her. Okay, so you do uh, some volunteering as well. Okay, cool. I'm just some kids over there as well, so right. I'm always giving back. You know, God is blessing me to be a gentle giant so the kids love me. Amen. <laughs> do anyone, any of them run to you and pull on your leg? Hey, Mr. Wright, Mr. Wright. <laughs> they don't call me Mr. Wright. They call me Miss Wright's husband. <laughs> Miss Wright's husband. <laughs> oh, I know that's right. Oh, kids are so precious. Oh, wow. All right. Hey, Mr. Oh, what grade does she teach? She teaches second grade this year. Okay, cool. I think they're going to move her up to like fourth grade, I'm not sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, have a blessed evening. You too. And you if keep... You stay in touch, you stay blessed. And I so will. I you <laughs> oh, you better stop. <laughs> but thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you. God bless you too, Shereen. Thank you. Bye-bye.